Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm talking about 10 books I really wish I read in 2021. Wrong. I had a pretty good reading year, and by pretty good I mean really good reading year this year. I read over 200 books, and we're still sort of going. I'm currently in a reading slump, so I don't know exactly how many more I'm going to read by the end of December, but overall, a really good reading year. However, there are still books that I was like, I wish I had picked those up, but I just didn't for whatever reason, and so I picked out 10 today that I really wish I would have gotten to. These are in no particular order, I basically just wrote them down as they came to me or as I saw them on my shelves still, that kind of thing. So these are 10 books, no top 10, like it's not in order, but just 10 books I really wish I would have read this year, and we're gonna jump right on into it. The first one I have here is Fantasy of Frost by Kelly St. Clair. This was actually gifted to me by Lana from Lauren Lullabies. We are quite good friends now, talk quite often, and she lives on the complete opposite side of the world. She currently lives in Australia, and so that's quite a ways away, even though we have done buddy reads and everything like that, and she gifted this to me around the time of the Indie Accords because this is an indie book. This is a self-published book, um, and this is one of her favorite series by this author. This is, I believe, a fantasy romance. I don't know if it's new adult or adult, but I wanna say it's not young adult but it is going to be fantasy romance. The cover is absolutely gorgeous, and Mona and I have quite similar tastes, especially when it comes to books of this genre, and so, um, yes, I was super excited when this came in. I did not know that it was coming in, but I got it around July or so, um, and I just have not picked it up yet. This is definitely one that I was hoping to get to during the Indie Accords if I had extra time, however, I basically was only able to do my TBR uh, and not even all of it, but most of it during that time. So this is one of my high priority ones for next year as well. The next one I have here is In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. This one specifically is an Illumicrate edition. It is absolutely gorgeous and this is going to be fantasy. I don't remember if it's YA fantasy, I think it actually might be, but I've heard nothing but good things about this one. The hype has died down a little bit because I do believe this came out like in the first half of this year um, and I don't remember much about it, but I mean like this cover is gorgeous. The back says she loves a princess, she's bound to a warrior, she must betray them both. So I am pretty sure that this is supposed to have a poly relationship in it and one other thing that has really gotten me interested in this again is that we had an asexual awareness week within the last month or two um, and this author does usually have asexual representation in their books and I'm pretty sure this one has a character that is that way as well from what I've heard and I just I need to read this. Then I also have When Night Breaks by Janella Angelis. This is the sequel to Where Dreams Descend. Not only is it the sequel, it is the finale because it's a duology. And I read Where Dreams Descend really early this year, um, like January or February, I can't fully remember. Absolutely loved it. That one is a mix of like Phantom of the Opera and Moulin Rouge and it has like a magical competition and that book like the vibe of it just like hit me the entire time like I know it's one of those books that I can't really fully describe why it is a full five stars except for I had a feeling so I was very highly anticipating this one this came out near the end of this year and I, I want to say it just got to that point where I was slowly starting to get into my reading slump and so I did not pick it up yet the cover is absolutely gorgeous. I definitely need to pick it up. I might consider rereading Where Dreams Descend before this one, um, just because I probably won't read this until next year. The next one I have here is The Nishan Smile by CJ Merwild. This is definitely a case of it took forever for the book to actually get here, and it's not necessarily that I lost interest, it's that I hit my reading slump. So this book was supposed to come out, I believe, at the end of June or July, and this is the Fae Crate edition that just had so many delays on it for whatever reason, I think because of COVID backups and all that kind of stuff, that we did not get this until last month. <laughs> and because of that, again, I just 
I've been in a reading slump. This is definitely an adult book. I don't fully know everything that it's about, but it is going to be adult fantasy with tons of content warnings and trigger warnings. The author, I believe, has a whole thing on their website all about this because apparently there's a ton and it's going to be following um, two boys from different races as they sort of grow up and become adults. I don't know much else about it except for people, again, seem to absolutely love it. It is very dark in parts, um, but people really, really enjoy it. And obviously the author of this did the art as well. I have been following them for a while on like Instagram and stuff because they usually have art in book boxes and that kind of thing. And then they wrote their own book that was published this year. So this is something that I definitely want to read, especially because they have, I was going to say fan art, it's not fan art because they are the author and they are also doing the art, um, but they have art of like their characters that they had done before they were actually like writing the story, and so I've just sort of felt like I've known the characters a little bit just from seeing the art, that I'm very, very interested in this. The next one I really wish I would have gotten to is Once Stolen by D.N. Brin. This is another one where I would like read the first book in this series <laughs> earlier this year. Absolutely loved it. This is actually one that I read for the India Accord, so I read it about July of this year again. It was so, so good. This is an indie published, self-published book, and Once Stolen is a companion sequel to the book that I read earlier this year, which was Our Bloody Pearl. So that one is specifically about pirates and sirens, and it's quite dark, quite bloody in the world, and how those, I was gonna say species, because sirens are definitely species, pirates! not necessarily a species, but how they interact with each other. Uh, and it had some really, really good found family elements. We had a lot of diversity in that book as well. I went in expecting a romance. It is not a romance. Just keep that in mind because it, it is not. Um, but we did have a sexuality representation. We had lesbian representation. We had disability representation. We had POC representation. Like we just had so much stuff. And like I said, the way it was written, how dark it was, but also that found family aspect, like I absolutely loved. And so Once Stolen is also going to be following Sirens, but a different siren. It's going to be set in the same world. And I just fell in love so much with Our Bloody Pearl that I immediately <laughs> pre-ordered Once Stolen. The same, like, it's the same time I finished the book. I finished it, I pre-ordered this one because I think it came out at the end of the same month that I read Our Bloody Pearl. And then I just didn't get to it. That is all I have. I think part of it is also that it is on my e-reader, so instead of having it on a physical shelf like this where I can see it all the time, it sort of goes into the back of my memory, um, but it is something I definitely want to read. Another ebook. Uh, just because this is where it happened in the list, is Arusha and the End of Time by Roshani Chukchki. This is something that I was supposed to read. It was on a TBR earlier this year, and it was one of the ones I just did not get to. And I think part of it, again, is that it is on my e-reader instead of a physical book. Um, but I have read some really, really good middle grade fantasy, especially fantasy that brings in other cultures than mine. And obviously this is an older one. I think I have the first three books, pretty sure on my e-reader because they had a sale earlier this year, like a dollar each, and so I was like, yes please, I want this because I want to read it. And it was like the one book off that TBR that I did not get to in that month, and so yeah, I definitely, it's in the back of my mind, like I should have read it and I didn't, um, but I definitely want to read this middle grade fantasy. Then the next one I would like to read is The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. I think this was on this list last year. Um, or something like that, I keep putting it off. I need to stop putting it off because I absolutely love The Poppy War. The Dragon Republic, the second book in the series, I did still like. I think I originally gave it like a four and a half. It might actually be a full four just because there is a little bit more political scheming in that one, which is not my favorite. Um, but then like the second half of the book really picks up with the battles and like that kind of stuff. Um, but then it ends on a cliffhanger and because of that cliffhanger, I should have wanted to pick this up as soon as possible, but then I heard it was devastating. <laughs> and I don't think I'm actively scared of it, but at the same time, I'm a little scared of it. And so, yeah, um, I've put this off for an entire year now, because I think this came out November of 2020. I need to read this. I think I even put it on my list of things that I'm going to read next year. 
we'll see if that happens because I did that last year as well but I need to read this the poppy war for people that do not know is a, a very adult very adult fantasy that is based on like Chinese myth and that kind of stuff it has a lot of that Chinese cultural elements and things put in there um, but it is in a fantasy world we do have like magic and gods and all this kind of stuff um, and I really like I said really really loved the poppy war I do think Dragon Republic was darker overall whereas the poppy war didn't really get dark until later in the book like really dark you know what I mean um, and so this one <laughs> I'm assuming it's also going to be very, very dark, um, but like I said, I heard it's devastating and I think, I think I'm scared. The next one I have here is Whispers of Shadow and Flame by L. Penelope. So this is a fantasy romance, the second book in a series of four books where the fourth book came out this year. I read the first book of this earlier this year in like February, absolutely fell in love with it like so, so much. Love the whole like world building and characters and we had a lot of good fantasy elements but we also had good romance elements like it's a fantasy romance and as soon as I finished the first book which is Song of Earth and Blood I wanted to pick this up but I was waiting because I don't own the third book and the fourth book wasn't going to be coming out until like late August, something like that. Well, <laughs> I never picked this one back up. Um, I love the first one so much and I just have not picked this one up. I love the covers on these, especially like they are so gorgeous. Um, I do know that the first book in this series follows like a magic system with warring lands and like one is white and one is black and they have very distinct like races even in not those specific countries but other countries um so it is broken up that way and in that first book we have multiple different like main characters we have like two main main characters but we do also have other chapters with other characters that do feel like they have the potential to be main main characters and this one based on the summary on the back is going to be following other characters and so I feel like it's probably going to be slightly more of a companion novel than a direct sequel but I'm also assuming we're going to have multiple chapters with multiple different main characters that kind of thing because of how the first book was but again I love the first book so much that I definitely need to read this I want to finish the entire series I just don't own books three and four yet but like I need I need to pick this up the next one I have here is Velocity Weapon by Megan E. O'Keefe. This was, I believe, a Christmas present last year from Lena, from Sufficiently Advanced Lena. And um, I do not know why I put this off. I think this was also one that I was trying to read earlier this year. It was on a TBR. I don't think I got to. Um, but this is one that I remember her saying, I feel like, was sort of Mass Effect-y in the vibes of it. And Lena and I definitely love like the Bioware games, Dragon Age, Mass Effect, that kind of stuff. And so whenever she starts to describe something as being sort of in that vein, I want to read it. I also personally just love sci-fi. And so this is one I should want to pick up. And I don't know exactly what made me not pick it up when I first like tried to put it on a TBR. And then I just haven't considered it again. But looking at the stuff that I have on my shelves that I should have read, I should have read this one. 100% should have read this one. From my understanding, this is about somebody who I think is maybe in a ship that crashes, something like that, and she like ejects and is in sort of like a cryo sleep for a couple hundred years, I believe it is, 230 years later, and gets picked up by a smart ship from the opposite side maybe? I don't actually know. She was in a war and now it's like 230 years later. It sounds amazing. I definitely need to read it. And then the last one I have here currently is We Could Be Heroes by Mike Chen. This is one that I personally picked out like the, the month it came out. I think it came out like in January, something like that. I believe it is a standalone superhero sci-fi. Um, and it sounded like it was also going to be sort of humorous. And out of the books I picked up in that haul, I think this is the only one I have not read yet. Again, I don't know exactly why, but I haven't. I absolutely love the cover. We can definitely see like our two people here in the middle. And then there is a cat like right here. Um, and so that, I don't, I don't know, the cover is amazing. They have a cat for some reason, but again, from my understanding, this is about people who could be heroes, but they have superpowers and they sort of use them for like more mundane things or not the necessarily nicest things. And so, I don't know, it just sounds like it could be very, very funny and intriguing. 
and I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet because it's not very thick. And then that is it for today. Those are the top 10, no order, just things I wrote down, but 10 books that I really wish I would have read this year in 2021. These will probably be ones that I try to read next year as well. We shall see. But I guess when I look at my shelves, these are the ones that I feel the most guilt about not having read already. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I am currently doing the 12 Days of Book Miss, so I will have another video up tomorrow, and I will see you then. Bye!